we want to fill a need and tell you what all is available beyond medication when it doesn't work. Well, first off, let's talk a little bit about men's health. What happens to men? Well, men, after they've been through the involvement with the pediatrician, they opt out. When do they come back in? It may be that they come back in through the emergency room. We want to bring them back into the system. Well, the urologist has a great opportunity to do that. For one thing, urology spans the whole life spectrum. The sexual component of this is all very fundamental as we're bringing men back into the healthcare system. Erectile dysfunction means that there's some problem with the ability to obtain and maintain an erection to consummate a relationship. Uh, erection dysfunction is very common. It affects 30 million men. And if you stop to think about it, in an average crowd, that's one in four. It's underdiagnosed. You're aware of the concept of, in mining, of the canary in the coal mine, right? And the reason that that's so valuable is the canary is much more susceptible to uh, limited oxygen consumption than the miners are. Erectile dysfunction is really a product of the lining cell of the artery. The earliest denominator of endothelial or lining cell dysfunction is erectile dysfunction. The arteries are the same everywhere. Here's a coronary artery, and here's an artery that is involved in the penis and the erection mechanism. What do you see about those two things that's different? Size, right? So if we have a problem with the lining in the heart, it's, that artery is going to keep right on pushing blood through and not being too much of a problem. But if we have a problem in this artery, the chances are we're going to know about it earlier. Canary in the coal mine. ED is commonly associated with things we think about blood vessels, right? Hypertension, ischemic heart disease, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease. When a man becomes sexually aroused, the concept is here, visual, most likely. The brain starts doing things. It starts sending out signals. Uh, Maybe it's a miniskirt, gets my attention. The brain starts turning on these switches, things start to happen. Here we are, average day, nothing much going on. Here, something's happened, but people have a reason to be thinking certain ways that they weren't thinking about back here. And that has to do with visual perception and neuropeptides in chemistry. It's really a sophisticated system, and it's because of that system sophistication that it's subject to fail. So what do we do? Well, Pfizer came up with Viagra. What's the problem with these drugs? Well, number one, they only work a portion of the time, and it takes a half hour to an hour for them to take effect, and they have side effects. Penile prosthesis is where we're going. Provides a tremendous satisfaction. The Prosthetic devices that we're going to talk about really are problem solvers. So what do I do when I see patients? Well, first thing is I try to educate them. I try to take the people who have severe erectile dysfunction and more importantly have a real desire to do something about it this direction. The medicines just haven't gotten the job done, so we're going to talk about prosthetic devices for a solution. Coloplast and American Medical Systems that manufacture these products are every bit that of the Mercedes or better. Uh, it's quality, it's quality control, it's uh, research and development, and when you get in one of these cars and you turn the ignition, you expect to go where you're going in comfort, and when you use one of the prosthetic devices, you expect the same. Now, there's three types. There's the malleable penile prosthesis, two-piece and a three-piece. Here's the malleable. This is a core, and you can bend this. It's malleable. So it's the 
simplest prosthesis to put in place in the erectile body and it gives you rigidity. Here, this device has been turned down and therefore not erect in, when they're not engaged in sexual oriented activities. Advantages? Well, they're easy to put in. Uh, patients can learn to use them quite easily. Their cost is lower than some of the things we're going to talk about and they give you good performance qualities. So this now is a penile implant that's inflatable. Here we have a reservoir which is in the abdomen. Here's a pump that is in the scrotum and here are cylinders that are in the erectile tissue of the penis. This is the Coloplast product that's called the Coloplast Titan and when it's erect it feels like a normal erection and when it's soft, it feels like a flaccid penis. To simulate an erection. To transfer the fluid to the cylinders, locate the pump in the scrotum. Squeeze the pump firmly a few times between the thumb and fingers until an erection is achieved to return to a flaccid state. Fluid pressure in the cylinders is released when the patient momentarily depresses the deflate valve button to enable fluid to return to the reservoir, thus returning the penis to the flaccid state. Now this is the Ambicor prosthesis. This is made by American Medical Systems. This is a pump in the scrotum. These are the cylinders that are filled. Here's the fluid. The reservoir is in the back portion of the implantable cylinder. This is going to be manipulated. Watch what happens. Now we've shifted the fluid out of the reservoir into the cylinders and the penis has a good quality of erection. Now we want to deflate this or have a flaccid penis again so here's how that works. You flex it for about a count of 10 and when you let go the fluid flows back into the reservoir and now you have a deflated soft penis. And this produces a high quality erection. There's no question about it, as does the three-piece. We're going to skip into the operating room for just a minute. And here is the Ambicor prosthesis procedure. We just did it. By the way, it's a brief procedure. Here's the end product. Now, what you see right here is the incision. Not bad. Not bad at all. Small incision. Uh, it can be done in the scrotum. It takes about an hour, seven to ten days, to really just get over what's happened. And you can back to sexual competence in about six weeks. We really focused on one segment, and that is treatment when medication just doesn't get the job done.